now I'm delighted to have with me a very special guest. Welcome to Ian Lachlan. Thank you for joining. Hello, Ian. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good, thank I'm you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Want to get? Yeah, I'm ready. Good, Ian. Right. So, thank you for agreeing to take part in my podcast. That's all right. No problem. Right. Um, what I'd always like to do is, Ian, is I'd always like to start from the very beginning. And I would like to know about your background and what led to you in um, presenting children's television and children's entertainment. Right. Um, well, I, I didn't really train for that. Um, I, I went to drama school in, in, uh, in Glasgow, Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. Um, and I uh, did a three-year course there. Um, I, When I left there, I started a theatre company for the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, where we uh, we toured the Highlands and Islands for two years with, with children's shows and with with uh, adult shows in the evening, you know, just to various just to community centres and things like that. Uh, so I did that for two years and then just decided I wanted to be, you know, like just an actor, really. So I, I, I left there and uh, I, I just... Uh, I you know got got some jobs in the circuit in Scotland as an actor you know at Perth Rep Dundee Rep places like that, um so I I uh, I, I picked up uh, very soon actually I picked up a really a couple of very good telly jobs I, I got a lead in a play for today on television, and um, and then I got uh, another one after that and I got a, a couple of series, uh, one called the Camerons and. Uh, King's Royal and things like that. So I did. I did quite a lot of tele. I did about two years of full of, of television, television drama, uh, in Scotland. And uh, but they were networked. It was, it was network stuff. And uh, then I, when I moved, I decided to move south. Um, and uh, I auditioned uh, for. Uh, no, actually, it was it was actually the 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 director of the Belgrade Theatre in Coventry. That saw me in one of the television programs and uh, asked me if I'd come down and play John Shand in the first play of the season in 1980. Um, so I did that, and uh, I and I never really went back to Scotland. I, I mean, my 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 first daughter, my daughter had just been born, and uh, and everything. so I moved all the family down. Uh, I never really went back, um, and uh, we we moved to London eventually, and. Uh, you know, and I just worked and doing revs. I couldn't get back into television down here, but um, when I was working at a play in, in the Belgrade Theatre, I, I worked at the Belgrade several times since, and um, as an actor, and one of the actors had, was a play school presenter. I don't really remember play school. It was a, just a preschool children's series that had been on for about, oh, 25 years or something. Uh, and uh, they were they were... They don't usually do it, but they were auditioning for new people. So I, uh, I decided to go and uh, an audition for a, a children's presenter on Play School, um, and um, and I got it. I, 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 they, they, they gave me five programs to start off with, and uh, and really, that was my first foray into children's television. Uh, I, I sort of became a. A presenter on Play School, and I, I eventually, and I, I, I worked on Play School for about nine years, uh, until the very last one, and I, I did the last, very last Play School before they axed, axed it. So, and but, but by that time, I had done, I'd been asked to do Finger Mouse series, and I, I was doing a lot of other series like Story Time and uh, various things on te on on BBC for children. So I was doing a lot of children's presenting at that time. So I kind of fell into it, really. It's a, it wasn't part of my plan because I, I just really wanted to be an actor. But um, I, I kind of fell into children's presenting and it, it kind of got hold of me, really. That's how I got into it. Hmm. 
And also, after play school, one of the shows you did was play days, I think. Yeah, well, when play school was, was axed, they decided, the BBC decided they weren't going to use any of the play school presenters in the new series, which was called Play Days. And it was a different programme per per day. Um, uh, so none of the presenters were used. But within about three months of it starting, I got a phone call to say, Ian, would you come and just do some stories? Not on screen, but just do some stories, just voice work, which I did do. I uh, did did a few stories for them, and then and then just gradually, because they were all such young presenters, very very young and, uh, and inexperienced presenters. They had got they didn't put any experienced presenters in the show to begin with, and uh, and they found that they, they they really needed some sort of uh, experienced presenter as well. So I started doing some stuff on play days, as you know, like doing. I think it was the tent stop I did originally. As an actor, um, and then I and and roundabout stop and things like that, and uh, and then, you know, from there, I I I got the chance to uh, to direct, write and direct a live show for them, a play days live show, which they'd never done before. They'd never ever gone to a live show, and uh, so I did that. I did their very first live show, and in Wimbledon at the Polka Theatre, and. Um, from that, they offered me a producer. So I started producing three of the days, three of the five days for for for, for play days. So I was I became a a television producer, producing the actual programs for them. I did uh, Why Bird Stop, Roundabout Stop, and the new one we created called Poppy Stop. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. What well, I wanted to know about um. Why bird stop, um, Ian? Is what was it actually like? You know, working with Nick Mercer. Oh, Nick's lovely. Yeah, I mean, I did. I did I've done quite a lot with Nick because Nick uh, actually he worked with me on on our own program called Fun Song Factory, uh, which was 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 only really made for videos to begin with. Um, it was only we were only we thought we were only going to make one video really. And we wanted to make some a uh, video of children's songs, and he uh, he he became he he was inside Ozzy, uh, uh, one of our our big our big bear, a big character. Eventually, uh, I think the first two program, the first two videos we did for play uh, Fun Song Factory. I don't think we had Ozzy, and I think we introduced him at a later stage, and then that was Nick Mercer that came and joined us to do it. But yeah, Nick worked with us a few times on, on Play School and uh, on Fun Song Factory. Very nice man, uh, and uh, great fun to work with, yeah. Hello? Oh, I've lost audio there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, great, great fun to work with. Uh, I don't know what Nick's doing now. I haven't seen him for a long time, but he, he was very good. Talking about Fun Song Factory, um, can you remember when the second show was actually filmed? I know it would have been before pantomime season that year. The, the second show? What, what do you mean by the second show? Fun Song Factory 2. Um, oh, that was... Um, that, where was where, Fun Song Factory 2 was done at uh, the... the um, the Chicken Shed Theatre in North London. Uh, because Liz Kitchen, who had written you know, a lot of our, our, our he, she did a lot of the music for Fun Song Factory. Her partner was uh, was instrumental in setting up Chicken Shed Theatre. And it was for basically children who had special needs and things like that. And um, and uh, we, 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 did it, we did it there. So um, I yeah, just, we, we, we wanted to do theatres. So that's why I we went to the polka to do the first one. We did the first one at the polka. And then the second one we did at the, the Chicken Shed Theatre because we felt we wanted to do a live show. Uh, but we discovered really that what, as we were doing the first two, that it's quite, it's quite difficult for television. If you want to make it for television, it's, you know, you're not really in control of that much of the sound and the lights and things. To the, by the time we went to the third one, we decided to do it in a studio, a television studio, but still have a live audience there. We had a, still had a live audience of young children in the studio. Uh, so that's when we changed our minds.
So, so who actually starred in the second Fun Song Factory show? I know it wasn't Sarah Davison, was it? Sorry? Who actually starred in the second Fun Song Factory show? I know it wasn't Sarah Davison. No, it wasn't. Um, I think it was... Um... It was... I'm trying to remember her name. Uh, oh, she was lovely. Uh, I her name's gone completely out of my head. <laughs> um, uh, Michelle Durler. Mich yes, Michelle Durler. You're absolutely right. Yeah, Michelle. Yes, she uh, she did it. Uh, and she's she's uh, she's no longer alive. She's now dead. Oh, she she got cancer, and uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, she married one of the sound guys we used on Tweenies, and. Uh, and she, 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 uh, she died of cancer just a few years ago, which is really, 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 really sad. But uh, she was fantastic. She's really lovely. Sarah Davidson was fantastic. Of course, she was. Uh, uh, I, I loved working with Sarah. She was a great fun. But so, so was Michelle, and uh, they both did a great job. I felt she, they had a lot to put up with with me and and uh, Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> uh, you're talking about Fun Some Factory too. One of the children you actually worked with. On that show was you know Marianne Lynch. Marianne Lynch. Yeah. The uh, one well, yes, one of the children, one of the Fun Song Factory children. Yeah. Yeah. So do you know Marianne? No, not really. I've only seen it on um YouTube. Right. Yeah. See. So, yeah. I mean, all the children were fantastic. We got all the children from. Uh, uh, my names have gone from my head now. Uh, uh, Bonnie Langford's mum ran a dance school. Where's that? So Bonnie Langford, she ran a dance school in uh, West London. Bonnie Langford's mum. All right. Ian, and, I've got, uh, sorry, I've got something I want to show you here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes me back. <laughs> and look at my back up this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you got all seven live shows? I, I, I'm i not sure if I've got all seven, but I've got most of them, I think. Which ones do you have? I think, I don't know. I'd have to check, but I mean, I, I mean, I should have all, all of them. I might, I might very well have all of them, but I'd have to check. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it, 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 it was taken over, it was taken over by Universal. Because it was it was Abbey Home Entertainment that 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 uh, that put the the money up for it. Because uh, we we went to and pitched it to them, and they they put the money up for the first one. Then they decided because they were a, a distributor, they distributed children's children's stuff around the 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 the, the market, and uh, and they were taken over by Universal. So Universal took Fun Song Factory over. Because uh, it belonged to to Abbey Home Entertainment, really, and uh, and and but when it came time for the DVDs, uh, when video was going out of fashion, the the Universal decided not not to to transfer the the videos onto DVD. So it was it was kind of lost at that time. Can you remember um, when Fun Song Factory Two was actually filmed? Like which month it was filmed in? Fun Song Factory Two. Yeah. Um not really, no. I can't really remember the, the dates we, we did it. Um no I'm sorry, I can't remember when exactly we we filmed that. No. One of my favorite songs on Fun Song Factory Two is Jack and Jill Went Up the Hill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we 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 decided we wanted to do lots of traditional rhymes and and songs, you know, and just make them fun, really, because a lot of the, a lot of the songs were getting lost, you know. Parents didn't know them, and they didn't know the the tune, and they didn't know the words. So we did. That's why we decided to do it. We wanted to do kind of uh, have a library of 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 songs that that young parents would not would, would be able to hear. And and know what the tunes were, and know what the, the the words were, and all the rest of it, you know. And the way this so they didn't get lost. Do you remember um, one of the fun some factory shows had Nick Mercer as a nursery rhyme guy? Yeah. Yes, that's when we we we, we when we did it in uh, 
in Univer in uh, Capital Studios in Wandsworth when we started filming it there. Uh, yeah, he became he 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 became a <laughs> a character from from the nursery rhymes. Yeah, and, and Nick. Um, I don't know. I've I've no idea what he's doing. What have you, do you know what he's up to these days? No. No, to be honest, I don't unfortunately. But I saw a podcast on someone else's channel about that. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Um. The obviously... thing I remember about Nick Mercer was he was he was he was really into trains. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember one of the episodes of Play Days, uh, Ian, where Nick had like a big heavy box and he like put it down or something and then in, he like had an accident with it or something. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> that that must have been the tent stop. No, why bird stop? Was it why bird stop? Oh no, no, I don't remember that. Maybe maybe he did that before I took it over. I can't quite remember. Mm. Um because it was it was there was it was produced by somebody else, you know, when it first started. It was uh, it was later on when I started producing them. So can you um talk about theatre now? Uh, can you uh -huh. remember um if you have a favorite pantomime you did, which one would it be? Um I think my favorite is it's difficult to tell. It's either Jack and the Beanstalk or um or Aladdin, I think. The two of them are my favorites. Mm-hmm. Of course, with um, with all these restrictions out in the way, obviously pantomime was not uh, the last two years or three years were not very festive, was it? Well, well, this year was the first time for a couple of years that we managed to do a proper one, really, and uh, with uh, I was allowed to have children and people up st on stage and things <clears> like that. So uh, uh, this year was fine. Uh, last year it was a little bit difficult, you know, just trying to get. I wasn't allowed children in the chorus and things like that. Um and everyone had to wear masks and things like that, so it was a bit difficult. But uh, the year before that, we couldn't do it at all. But I did one in the studio. I did a digital one, a Jack and the Beanstalk in the studio, which we televised and just uh, d uh, streamed. Um, are you still in touch with any of the cast? You know who did Fun Song Factory, or have you lost contact with a lot of them? Um, I still I still speak to Dave Benson Phillips occasionally, mm -hmm. and uh, Sarah went to Spain, and so I, I lost touch with Sarah. Um, Liz Kitchen, who was a musical director, I still keep in touch with. Um, um, cho choreographer, who did the choreography? Um, well, it was different people really, but uh, I mean, Will Brenton, who wrote it with me, who was my writing partner at the time, I still occasionally speak to Will as well. So, uh, still keeping track in touch with several people, yeah. What about from children? Um, I know you're in touch with presenters what about children who starred in the show, no, no, not really, no. Uh, but I must say that I have bumped into a, a one or two of them, um when I'm auditioning for Panto because they've grown up <laughs> and they've become actors and they're, they're now going around doing auditioning. So they, you know, they'll, they'll say to me, I was one of the, one of the children in being, you know, fun song factory for you and things like that. So, so it's nice to see them again and see that they've gone into the business and, you know, and just have a little chat about it. So I occasionally bump, bump into them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Dale Hodges, he he starred in Fun Song Factory, didn't he? Dale, yes, he was he was the smallest. <laughs> he was he was in it. For, he was in a lot of them. Dale, uh, he was a tiny little tiny little chap when he first started, uh, uh, and he was very very good, lovely uh, little blonde chap, and he uh, he was very very good and a lovely little boy as well. And his his mum was lovely too, uh, so uh, we we used him quite a lot. I liked Dale; he was very good. Mm. There were two um, ch children in the front some factory I remember could Jade as well. If you remember them, her. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the girl, one of the children was uh, uh, was it was it was it Zara? Was it uh, Zizi? Zizi, Zizi. Yeah. Yeah, she was. She was very good. Uh, 
she was uh, the niece of uh, of uh, what do you call her from uh, her mum her mum run the, the her mum run the school uh so so she 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 was she was in the family anyway but she was very good as well when she when she got old enough she joined as well but um yeah lovely yeah, the, most of the kids all, in fact all of the kids we had were absolutely smashing really worked hard yeah i seem to remember that um in fun song factory too um you and michelle performed oranges and lemons yes yes that's right um yeah, which was quite an old, quite an old song, really, and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't done much, uh, and and that's what we would, you know, wanted to try and do, try and revive some of the old ones, oranges and lemons, and uh, Jack and Jill to a certain extent, and things like that. So all ones which which were very popular. When... Uh, yeah, um... it's such a question, really, but we wanted to still keep them alive. Mm, sounds good. Um, yeah, so. Um... With Fun Song Factory too, were all the children actually, you know, from the Chicken Shed Theatre? Uh, only the children in the audience. Uh, uh, the children, the children, uh, the children uh, in uh, were were still from uh, from the dance school that we used. The ch some of the ch and some of the children, you know, who were in the first one came back and did the second one. Yeah. Another thing I've noticed about Fun Song Factory too is um obviously the three songs you sang at the beginning was I can't remember which ones there were. I know there was a theme tune. We all clapped and took it together and then I forgot what the other one was. Mulberry Bush and uh This Old Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we did quite a few songs in each of them because we would try to try to pack as many in as we could, really. Um because it's basically about about uh about music and about you know it's, it's, and uh, and and I think that's what why, why it was so popular. It was very popular with um, with people with people with special needs as well because they like they like the music and the and they could they could move to it and they could they could learn the songs and just play it over and over and over again. I think that was the thing about Fun Song Factory. Children just replayed it over and over again. Yeah, the amount of times I have a video on all, all the time is like fantastic because I seem to watch it nearly all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was, we like we 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 for for Fun Song Factory two. We managed to sort out quite a few of the problems that we 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 found with Fun Song Factory one. You know when we were doing it in the theatre. So if, if, when we did it for the second one, we you know sorted out quite a few of the problems. So it was uh, I felt it was a better one. You know. Do you remember? Um, there was a horse inside the Fun Song Factory. I think it was Neddy, Neddy the horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was you and Michelle yeah, we, inside there. Wasn't we, uh, it? it was. That's right. We, uh, we, we got a, a horse costume. It was actually. I, I think we got that horse costume from from, uh, from the Belgrade Theatre in Coventry. <laughs> I think they used to have an old horse costume, and uh, but we had quite a few puppets and things in it as well. Yeah, we did. All, we, yeah. Um, was a city. One of the fun some factory shows I remember is one. When um you sang Goosey Goosey Gander, I mean, for fun, some factory gave you a grey beard. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was the one that I was always the one that was uh, had to dress up in various things. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that. So, so, which fun some factory cast did you have in the GMTV series? If you remember, yeah, that was that was that was new. Uh, um. Because we got new people to do it, um, I wanted to present when 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 we got GMTV see the, the the GMTV thing, I wanted to present it with Dave, but um, the producer, the executive producer at uh, at the TV at London uh, in London, uh, didn't want me to present it, so. Uh, I remember there being a bit of a bit of a row at the time, um, because we all want because you know, we wanted wanted me to do it, and then uh, she would she said no, so we ended up so I ended up producing it, 
Um, and uh, we got people like Justin, Justin Fletcher, mm-hmm. who plays Mr. Tumble. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think Carl Woolley that we'd used a few times. Um, and Bob Golding, I think. Uh, um, and I think we there's quite a few, a few that we hadn't used before, which we we we, we, we it, it was different. It, it just felt different. It was a little bit different. The the GMTV one. Alex Lovell, she was quite. She started in a few, didn't she as well? Yes. Yes, Alex Lovell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, we've been through a few of them. We've we've worked with quite a few people on that. Mm. Yeah. Also, about the GM TV series, they had Sally the Cat. She would, like, change from black and white to, like, blue. Yeah, Sally the Cat. We we, we, we used a, a similar cat to the one we, we introduced in uh, into Play Days, which was Poppy, the Poppy Stop. The Poppy, Poppy Stop. And uh, we got the same girl to do the puppeteering on it, Sue. Uh, and we got we got another cat made similar, but a different color. Mm. Yeah, what I've noticed about play days yeah, around uh, about stop. We, we just introduced. Yeah. Sorry. What I've noticed about play days around about stop was how Andy Hockley. Used to dress up as yeah. different characters. Yeah. Yes, Andy Hockley was someone else we brought in. We decided to to have a new Mister Jolly, and uh, when we took over, uh, when I when I pro- we produced uh, uh, the road about stop, I took over, re- revamped it, and got a new Mister Jolly. And and Andy Hockley is someone that I've worked with at several times, um, in in theatre basically. He hadn't really done any telly. Uh, but he he uh, I worked with him in theatre, and uh, we got him to do Mister Jolly, and he he proved to be very good indeed, and very popular actually with the children. <laughs> yeah, he uh, the roundabout stop was uh, was a challenge, but uh, but great fun to do. Um, yeah. Now is we're going to go on to our next um thing, which is the tweenies. Oh yeah. What I wanted to know is, I know it's a bit weird talking about it at this time of year, but what was the filming of the Christmas episodes of the Tweenies like? Well, we we did, uh, I mean, we did three hundred and ninety episodes altogether, and uh, I, I I wanted to. We had to do everything. We we had to we had to try because because of the of the diversity, we had to try and do everything you know we had to do uh hanukkah and we had to do uh, eid and we had to do uh, you know diwali and and things like that and and we also did a christmas episode as well for 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 the christian faith and uh and it was just i mean it's just uh, just doing a sort of kind of christmasy version of anything is just a little bit special but uh, the uh the the thing which we did which was was most exciting was we did a big christmas show live Christmas show with the tweenies in the Albert Hall in London uh, and uh, it was massive shows thousands and thousands of children uh, in, in the Albert Hall watching it and uh, and that that was a fantastic show it really was it was lovely I mean we, so we used to do a lot of arena shows with the tweenies Do you remember which Fun Some Factory show would you say is your favourite? Fun Some Factory. Um, I I don't know really. Uh, I think I think once we moved into the studio and we had more control over things. Um, when we moved to Capital Studios to start filming it in Capital Studios, I think that's when I started to to feel that we and we got a new set, we got a bigger set, and we redesigned the whole thing, and uh, and that was when you know Nick came to do Nick Mercer joined us, and uh, 
and we started to we were able to do a lot more and a lot more televisual things in the studio than we had been able to do in the theatre. So I felt that it, it kind of took a, a leap. So I, I think uh, probably my, the the one I, I enjoy enjoyed most was 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 number three when we moved into the studio. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Another thing I noticed about Fun Song Factory 2 is how naughty you and Michelle were. You know, when <laughs> you hid Dave's boots and the socks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. We, uh... <laughs> well, it was just... We just tried to get as much fun out of it as possible. You know, that's that's the main thing, and I, and I think that was, as well as doing just the 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 songs, it was important that we we you know we had a bit of fun with it for the children. You know, yeah. uh, so that you know keep watching it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Was Fun Song Factory two actually filmed in nineteen ninety five or six? If you remember. Um. Ninety five, I think. Hmm. Ninety five. Ninety. Yes, it must have been about ninety five, I think, because uh, we did some in the studio. So Ian, so, so, for some reason, I think it, the wife I seem to be having a lot of glitches for some reason. I don't know if it's your end or if it's um, my my end or anything. Uh, I'm I'm not seeing that at all. I mean, at yeah. all. But... No. Mm hmm. I've got something else I wanted to show you, Ian. It's this. Remember this video? Nursery rhymes. <laughs> yeah. Is yes, is that the one when I did uh I did the old woman who lived in the shoe? No, no, no. This is a different one. This is a Makaton nursery rhymes. Oh, it's Makaton. Yeah. Oh yeah, with Dave Benson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Makaton was uh, was a good thing to do because that was before Justin picked it up, I think. Because yeah. Justin became very popular with the Makaton, yeah. and we had done we had done like, the video before before Justin, yeah. Yeah. So you've got you've got a number of videos there, then. I have, yeah, and also, um, I got all seven from some factory. Well, not all seven because I don't have old McDonald's farm, but I do have fun and games. If you remember that one. Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, McDonald's Farm was a really fun one to do because yeah. we went. Yes, yeah, that was very good. Because um, we, we we went from we we, we skipped from location to uh, to studio all the time. Mm. It was very good. I was thinking, um, and another good podcast would probably be a group interview. You know, like where I talk to you and Dave Benson Phillips at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how busy Dave is these days, but I'll just uh, kind of talk to him occasionally, really. Sometimes yeah. bump into him. All oh, right. Hey. How's he doing? I think he's doing well. He's doing all right now, I think. He had a, he had a hard time at one point because somebody was posting terrible things about him on the internet and, and it affected his career, I think. Oh, yeah. uh, but um, I think he's doing all right now. Mm. Do, do you remember doing Christmas at the Fun Song Factory? Yeah. Yeah. That one must have been great fun to do. That was lovely because we had, we did some, some some nice Christmas songs, you know, like Who's Coming on Christmas Night. We did. I remember Sarah doing uh, 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 All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth and things like that. So, <laughs> Oh, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So it was very good. She, she, she was excellent in it. Mm. So is that... Is, uh, Oh, McDonald's farm, the only one you haven't got. Yeah, at a moment, but I've got Funs and Factory one, two, three, party time, wasn't it? That one. And what was the fourth one? Was the fourth one Christmas time? Yeah. Yeah, Christmas time, I've got that one. And what was the other one? Oh, goodness. Christmas. It was seven altogether, wasn't it? Yeah, seven. Yeah. Yeah, so what else is up? I'll have to have a look and see what I've got. So I might, I might, if I've got, if I've got a, a spare copy of um of Will McDonald, I'll, I'll send it to you. Thanks, Ian. That'd be good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah, um, yeah, um, 
there was somebody called Rebecca in that pantomime as well. If you, it, it, sorry, fun some factory if you remember that. Rebecca Griffins, I think her surname is. Oh yeah, Rebecca Griffins. No, no, I don't remember Rebecca Griffins. I can't remember now. I can't remember Rebecca. No. Um. Um. Ian. Yeah. I was wondering what songs do you, do you I know it's going back a bit, but which songs do you do you remember from Fun Song Factory 2? Oh dear. Um I can't remember now. I, it's, it's difficult to they all kind of merge into one really now. Uh, I'm I'm not sure what, what ones what we did and I, I remember the songs in, in one more clearer than I do in two. Yeah. Um because I remember, uh, yeah. Because I mean, when we did Fun Song Factory One, we 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 chose very carefully the songs because we thought we were only going to make one, <laughs> yeah. and then when we got another one, um, we had to choose some songs. Uh, um, I just can't remember now which what we did now. I'd have to I'd have to I'd have to, I'd have to listen to it. Uh, I'd have to watch it again. <laughs> whatever shows you did was. Uh, songs he did was I'm driving in my car. All right. We must have done a. We must have done. Did we do a transport thing? Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's right. Um. Just, just trying to, just try, you're trying to extend the, the, you know, the songs that, that, that you know, to, 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 to put down on video really for for appearance really. That's we were just trying to find things which you know might might suit. Mm. Another, I was actually watching a Play School episode that you starred in last night. Play School? Yeah. Uh huh. And it was the one when you had that donkey um, and you sang this Christmas song. <laughs> oh, I can't remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> There's so many gone by now, I can't remember. Yeah. Do you remember working with with um Wayne? Wayne um with Wayne Jackman. Yeah. 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 He was lovely. I really liked Wayne. He was a he was a magician. Hmm. He, yeah. He he used to do a lot of magic, Wayne. And uh but Wayne and I wrote a, a, a sitcom together. It was never ever done, it was never ever put on, but we we wrote one together. Uh, yes, I, I, Wayne was lovely. He was great. He also I don't know what he's up to. He he used to live in Brighton. Yeah, he also starred in um, all sorts, didn't he? If you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. No, oh, he did quite quite a number of things. Wayne, he got he got started into children's, but he as he started as I say, he started off being a a, a silly magician. You know, doing all sorts of silly things. I'm trying to remember the name of his character. He did. I can't remember now. Uh, but oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Doctor Wacky. Doctor Wacky, that's the one. Yeah, do yeah. you remember that? Yeah. Doctor Wacky. Yeah. Yeah. He, he. That's how he started. Uh, and then he got into children's stuff. Um. Uh, yeah, we got on very well. We got on very well. Yeah. Um. Um, Fun Song Factory GMTV series was my favorite, but one of my favorite songs is you know, this is a bread that Jack built, yeah, huh? If you remember that oh, yeah. one, yeah, 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 yeah. But so, by the time we got there, I mean, we were we were struggling for new songs and stuff, you know, um, because we'd done so many in Fun Song Factory by that time. I remember we were struggling, we were, we were and we reused some songs, but yeah, um. Uh, uh, it was very much. It was very much up to GMTV what they wanted in it. Really, we had they, you know, uh, we we kind of gave them what they wanted. Really. Yeah. Well, Ian, it's been a joy. I mean, a joy to chat to you, you to you today. Well, it's been lovely meeting you. I mean, it really has. Thank you, Ian. And thank you for uh, for uh, for doing this for me. Thank you. It was very nice of you. And I'll, yeah. as I say, I'll have a look and see if I've got a spare a spare one of like Old MacDonald, and I'll 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 send it off to you. Oh, I'll well, I'll email I'll email you and uh, and get your address yeah. uh, if I've got one. Okay. 
Yeah, what I was thinking, I maybe might do another podcast, but uh, maybe with you, Will and Dave, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah, we'll see if you can arrange to get everybody.